My name is Rob Basso, and as a successful entrepreneur, I've been involved with hundreds of businesses and learned from their owners what makes them tick. Today, I'm on a mission to help entrepreneurs examine the challenges they face and find solutions to make their businesses even stronger. This is Basso on Business. Hey, Jeff. Hey. Good to see you. How are you? Wow. I've been in lots of places to shoot shows, but I tell you, this is a first. This place is amazing. Well, this is where we. This is where I got my start. What do you mean? Well, this is my very first job. Was in this skating rink. In this actual in skating this, rink. In this building. So, what did you do for them? I was a. I was a rink guard. A rink guard. What does a rink guard do? Really doesn't do much. Just make sure people don't, don't skate backwards and clobber each other. Hey, so you started in an ice rink, and, and what is it that you do now? What we do now is we, we do commercial and industrial refrigeration. We do a lot of package ice plants, fisheries, and stuff like so that. So I'm assuming it's some of the same concept and machinery to actually keep this place cold. It's all exactly the same. It's so it, exactly it doesn't cold. matter if you're skating on it or if you're throwing it, you're icing fish or scallops or anything else. That's right. It's all The refrigeration is all the same. Most importantly, were you a decent hockey player? I was all right. I was good enough to have fun and play on, and play on pretty good teams and, and uh, win some championships along the way. But but I wasn't. Uh, win some I wasn't championships. The, you must have been pretty good. I was. I was pretty good at knocking people into the benches and stuff like that. You I looked like you could be the enforcer. A little bit. <laughs> and, you know, we're standing on this ice. I'd really like to see how this stuff is made. Well, let's go downstairs and take a look at how we make it cold. Oh, great. Let's go. What is this machine? You have a series of components that, that are with this, this particular skid package. You have compressors, you have chillers, you have oil separation. So there's a lot of different things going on. Are you also a master technician? You know how to fix all this stuff? Well, that's how I got my start in the, in the business. I started off as a, a helper okay. and uh, worked my way through the business and, and uh, owned my own company. So I'm not too far removed from the field. So how do you train your technicians to do this job? Because it's pretty technical. So how do you train them and where do you find them? Same way I learned, and you tell me where to find them because they're a hard bunch to find. <laughs> Why is that? You, there's a lot of out of work people now. The economy's pretty tough out there. You have to work on this type of equipment and you have to work in the field in order to be successful in sales, in order to be successful in, in any part all right, of the business. All right, so they got to learn this first before they can be successful in any part of the business that you have? Yeah, because it's... Why? it's a void that I have in my business now, a regular outside sales rep or any other salesman that doesn't have a background or a technical aptitude in this equipment, he can get you to the door, but he requires somebody technical to go in and close it. So I understand that hiring people are a challenge, but I'm sure that's not the only challenge that you have in your operation. Uh, I'd like to come back to your place and see what you actually do. Do you have time to do that now? Sure. Okay, let's, let's get out of here. Oh, this is a cool space. Yeah, we moved here uh, about a year and a half ago. We use it for storing some vehicles if it's rough weather out. We have hurricanes or bad snowstorms. Our fleet can fit in here, or a couple of the trucks can. So then we, in the back corner, we have a study area where the guys actually have to study because the technology is constantly changing. Well, you mentioned earlier that you were struggling with some hiring challenges and some general issues with employees. You know, I know you said you had somebody start a few weeks ago and you said she's doing really well. What is her job description? What actually does she do? Does she know what her job description is? No. That's one of our big problems. All right, why wouldn't she know what her job description is? I mean, you it, hired it, someone, you went through the trouble to interview them, you went through the trouble to put ads in the paper, you know you need good people, and we've talked off camera, and you say, I need people, I need good people, I need people that can do this, this, and this, and now they come to work for you, and what are they supposed to do? But you don't have a manual in place now, you're not, you're not, you don't really have job descriptions. So what is the East Coast Refrigeration uh, training the process? The training process for the, for the office personnel is, is pretty extensive. It's a training syllabus that, that takes about three days to complete. What about like their mission statement, like the company mission statement? Do they understand what it is that you're trying to do as a business owner and what their yeah, efforts are to help move it forward? Yeah, we don't have that. Have 
that. We don't, that's, that's, that's what we really need. What, to. what I was really getting at, that mission statement sets up your entire being, why your company is in existence, and to get everybody to rally behind that. So with every decision that they make, they have the mission statement in mind. If they have that mission statement in mind when they're making decisions when you're not around, you know in general that right. they're gonna come out fairly well because they're in the best interest of you and your company and your family. And obviously you've done nothing wrong. You've done a good job building your business. It's just, you told me you wanted to take this business to a new level. Without going back to some of the basics, that's gonna be really hard. So what are your salespeople actually responsible for? You've got, to so suppose it's inside salespeople you wanna start hiring. Do you have any outside salespeople yet? I have an outside salesman, yes. Okay, what, what, what are their responsibilities? Develop new clientele and you know, it's a work in progress. What kind of goals do they have? Do they have absolute goals and how many calls they're supposed to make on a weekly basis, monthly basis, quarterly basis? Do you have an entire sales plan built for this outside salesperson? No, that was one of the things that I struggled with is, is, <clears throat> is not having experience with a salesman and being the one mm. who is that salesman, you know. Really, to get the best out of them, they gotta be trained and motivated in the best possible way. And sometimes that's not necessarily just compensation or even, you know, benefits. Is there anything else that the company does for them now that would make someone say, I wanna work for East Coast? Other than good compensation, mm -hmm. no. Jeff, from what I see from your business is, it's really at a pivotal point right now. It seems like you've got bits and pieces of it done but it's not being done in a necessarily cohesive fashion. Do you feel that you have a positive attitude when you walk in here and that people know that Jeff is the leader and Jeff's going to take care of everything and you know we're here yeah. for him, we're here for Jeff? Does yeah, that what people no, feel that, like? No. Why no. do you think that is? You know, I'm a kind of a direct guy, so if I'm thinking it, it's coming out. There will become a time where people will not accept you necessarily being gruff and dropping. I know I'm the boss and this is my company, but you know what? People don't really want to hear it that way. And I'm not suggesting you do it all the time, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, it's a big thing. People want to feel like they're a part of the team and not necessarily that, that you're equal, but that you take them just as seriously. Trying to find people with that level of commitment. No one's ever going to treat my business the way that I treat my business. I'm really not sure I agree. Because no, I've met I haven't with, found one yet. Well, you haven't found one yet, but they are out there. And I have them in my business. Uh, and I know I've met other entrepreneurs who have been there. So what's your process when somebody's leaving your organization? Fired, see you, don't come back. Thank you. Do you have a conversation with them? Why they're uh, being let go? I, what's I, going on? I, I, I mean, do you have a written policy that says this is how we go through our, you know, our exit interview? Do you, do you, do you have it that, that sophisticated yet at this point? No. That's the okay. one thing that, that that's the, the I, you procedures could, and... You could get a tremendous amount of feedback when you're letting somebody go. I mean, are you, you're not in the process of doing that now. Do you have some, anybody that's in a situation that you could be letting somebody go or you're not in that situation now? We're in, we're in that situation. Oh, you're in that situation in that now. Situation. Have you thought about how you're going to handle it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of, I, I, know, I know what I have to do. It's, uh, I've, been, I've been pushing it off and... and uh, Why have you been pushing it off? Um, I, giving someone the benefit of the doubt. Hmm. And, uh, How's that helping your business? It's not. Hmm. <laughs> You're trying to be a good guy. Yeah. And You're trying you, to be a good you can't, guy. You can't do both. Well, I think there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a line, but eventually you have to step over it, and right. you're just about to step over that line. Right. When somebody's leaving, you want to tell them what they did wrong or why it didn't work out, and you might find out a year from now, after you go back and look at that, that it was your fault. Yeah. That you didn't train them right, that you didn't give them the proper expectations, that because they didn't have a job description that said these are the things you're responsible for, they were not capable of actually doing that job because they didn't even know what they were supposed to do or how they were supposed to do it. I'm not suggesting you yeah, did that in this no, case. Yeah, no, I see, but I, I, see, I think you're right. Do you have customers that are waiting to see someone from your firm right now, potential customers that are waiting to yeah. see somebody? Yeah. Why are they waiting? They're waiting because that to send, my, to send an outside sales guy is, is almost like a, a waste of time. Why is that? Because he doesn't know what they, he's not able. Whose it's fault very is technical. that? It's mine. Okay. I have to get there. It's just nice to say it out loud, yeah. isn't it's, it? Yeah. It's until, there's not enough hours of the day. You know, you can't go there at 2 o'clock in the morning. And you have to have the gift of gab. You know, some of these well, guys, that you know, they got to talk to a machine. When, when you get to start talking to people? You just happen to be blessed with both. You're a right. technical guy <laughs> and you have no problem talking. But there are people like you out there. The Speaking bottom line is, if you've got a lead that comes in and a prospect has to wait a week, they're going to go someplace else. I was expecting fireworks when I met with Jeff today. 
Well, those fireworks never really exploded. I assumed, suit and tie guy coming in, giving advice to a blue collar high school graduate, that he wasn't gonna listen to a word I had to say. Well, I was wrong and pleasantly surprised. He was very open and honest about the things that he was having trouble with in his business. But I think he was blindsided a few times. He didn't realize that he had a leadership issue. He didn't understand that some of the things that he was doing was driving the business in the wrong direction. In fact, he didn't have a mission statement in place. He didn't have any hiring policy procedures in place. He didn't have an employee manual in place. He didn't even have job descriptions for employees. How is he expected to run an organization and grow it without these policies and procedures in place? I think if Jeff takes the time and effort to put these things in place and get a strong mission statement and stay healthy, Jeff will have a successful business in life. I look forward to the challenge. Uh, he's gonna hold my feet to the fire, so I, I look forward to that. I like when my customers hold me accountable um, and I'm an accountable guy, so I'll, I'll, I'll make sure everything is done. I'm really looking forward to the ideas and the, the feedback I get from the exposure from doing this. That's something that, you know, uh, I take a lot away from people in business uh, anytime I'm around them. So the more people I can be around, the more I can learn and how to be more, uh, more effective as in leadership and, and owning the business, running the business. So I'm looking forward to all of it. More information, the better. This is Vaso on Business.